Okay. We're going to get ourselves started. Going to mute everyone. We'll be able to. Maybe you're here. Everyone's here. Getting all the things ready, the candle. Oh, wow, leaf. Have our son name here, Rosie Cunn. Okay, we're going to start the Abdullah. We have the sun in the candle ready. Okay, just getting my family here together. It's too hard for you, someone else wants it. The sign is making me crazy. Okay. Are we ready? Okay. Now we're ready.
and 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 uh, won't want to just be a, a a regular charity case. He started to travel around all over, and in his travels, he would uh, come dressed like a beggar because he had no money. But you looked at his face, you saw a dignified person behind, not a typical beggar. And when he came to town, he never asked anyone for anything. But sooner or later, in the base Madrash, we were studying and. People noticed, they came to him, they offered him a meal. That's how he made his way. And he came to this town where Ruvain lived. And he comes to the town and he sits down in the base madrash. And, and, and uh, he, he comes in, Ruvain comes to pray. Anyways, he sees a guy sitting in the corner and he's sitting and studying. So Ruvain also sat down to study a little. And he heard, he overheard what the guy was saying and the way he's learning. He saw this guy knows how to study. Never saw this guy before. So he goes over to the guy. He says, I'm hearing a little. Are you learning? I see uh, you're a Talmud Chacham. You know how to learn. I'd love to have a Torah discussion with you. Why don't you come to my house after prayer, morning prayer? You come to my house with me uh, to, after the prayers. We'll be able to talk more Torah. So the fellow thought, you know, oh, it's beautiful. I'll go to someone's house who's a Ben Torah. knows how to study. I'm sure he'll give me a good meal. After the prayers, two or three people came over to the fellow and they say, you're new in town. It seems like you may need a meal. You want to come to our house? He said, no, no, no. No need. I was already invited. Really? Who invited you? Uh, they pointed to this guy. They're looking. Ruthane, the miser, invited you to his house. Oh, maybe his heart opened up. Anyway, this guy is excited. He goes to Ruben's house. A sumptuous meal is laid out for Ruben. And he starts engaging this fellow in, in talk, Torah talk. Doesn't offer him one more salute. And this guy's watching a Ruben is eating and eating. And in between bites, he's refuting him and arguing with him until food. At the end of the, the Ruben finishes his meal, he says, okay, now you can go. And thank you for joining me in this great Torah discussion. The guy leave, leaves the house heartbroken. He's hungry, hasn't eaten for three days. And now the guy didn't give him a meal. And he goes back to Shul, he studies, comes from Myriv. Ruvain is back in Shul. He sees the guy again. He says, wow, that was a beautiful uh, discussion. Maybe I want to come back to my house tonight after the prayers. He thought, you know, maybe this morning he got carried away, didn't offer me food. But tomorrow, tonight, he'll offer me a good dinner. Anyways, he goes to his house. Other mm -hmm. people offer him. He says, no, I'm taken care of. He goes to the house. The same exact thing happens. The same exact thing happens. Ruben eats a beautiful meal, doesn't offer him anything. He, he just makes his way out of the house, just makes his way out of the house. Can't even carry himself much. And he dies out of hunger. He dies out of hunger. That night, Ruben is sleeping on his comfortable bed. Life is good. He had two good discussions in learning today. He hadn't had it in years. And all of a sudden, he gets shooken up. He has a dream. And in his dream, he sees a person who's covered all in white. And he never saw a, a vision like this. Then there's what he thought Gehenna looks like, heaven looks like. What's he looking at? And all of a sudden, the guy pulls back the white sheet covering his face. And he sees the face of the beggar, who, the guy who was in his house that day. And the guy tells him, you know, I came to your house twice today. I didn't eat in days. You didn't offer me one piece of food. This is a terrible, terrible sin. And in heaven, they don't want to let me go to my final resting place until the one who caused my death comes to heaven and he gets his punishment. So I am here to tell you that they're coming to take you to heaven. So the man says, no, in his dream, he says, no, 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 no. I can't go to heaven. I'm not ready to go to heaven. Is there something else? So he says, yes, there may be another way. Tomorrow night, I want you to take a little bag with you. Go into the forest. You'll meet me there, and I'll tell you what you have to do. Because I want you to know the, 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 the man who passed away said, that because of your sinning with me, I'm suffering as well. You're suffering, but I'm suffering as well. So if you come tomorrow night, you'll accept or else you have to die. So tomorrow night, 
Don't tell his family anything. He takes a bag. And he comes to the forest. He comes to the appointed place. And he meets this man there. The white uh, sheet came down from heaven. And the man says, this is the story. For you to be able to start the process of forgiveness, you're going to take off your clothes that you're wearing, your beautiful clothes, put them in the bag. I will take them from you. And I'm going to give you another set of clothes, a, a set of torn clothes. And you're going to go back to town because of these new clothes you're wearing and the shoveled look, no one will recognize who you are. And you're going to sit in the base medrash. And when you get hungry, the only place you're allowed to go is your own home. And when you come to your house, they're not going to recognize you. It's probably going to throw you out of the house like they do every other poor person, like you instructed them. But that's the only place you'll be able to eat. And then you go back. Don't accept food from anyone else. And this will go on for 12 months. In 12 months, you'll meet me right here again. The guy wants to do teshuva. He wants to he realizes what he did. His marginalness has caused even a death. And he accepts and he goes back to the town. And he goes, he comes early in the morning. The shul's not open yet. The shamish comes and opens the shul. He sees a beggar there, lets him in. He sits down. No one recognizes him. A beggar, another beggar in town. People come. Do you need food? No, no, no. A unusual beggar doesn't want any food. And then after two, three days, he hasn't eaten. He's hungry. He can't take it anymore. He knows the only place he knows is his house. He knocks on the door of his house. The maid opens up, looks at the beggar, takes one look at this crack job, and she says, get out of here immediately, closes the door. But he knows he can't go anywhere else. He knocks again. It happens five or six times. Finally, the woman of the house said, though we're heartbroken, we don't know where our, our, my husband and the father of my kids went, just give him some leftovers. And this went on for a year. Everyone laughed at him, this unusual beggar, one set of clothes, looked very funny on him. And no one recognized who he was, like he had a different look. And whenever he got hungry, he came to the house and they got used to him and they gave him a few leftovers. Then comes the night 12 months later, and he comes to the appointed place in the forest, and this man in the white, uh, in the white, the sheet is not there. So he starts thinking, ah, all this what I did, and they're not accepting my tshuva, my repentance. He goes back to the show and he starts crying. Maybe it's too big of a sin that I can never get the atoned. But all of a sudden, he falls asleep, and all of a sudden. The man in the white sheet comes and says, remember, tomorrow night, 12 months are over. I'm going to meet you at the place. So you met, so you woke up, he said, ah, at least seems like I may be forgiven. And he goes to meet him tomorrow night, excited to hear what's next. And when he meets him, the guy says, you're giving me peace. Now that you've gone through your tshuva, through your repentance, Hashem's accepted your repentance. Now I can go get peacefully come to my place in heaven and your repentance accepted. So what do I do? So now here's your bag of clothes. Put back on your clothes. And you can keep your beggar's clothes. He puts his beggar's clothes in the bag and he says, go back home and enjoy your family. He goes, he shows up the next day. Everyone is shocked. Where were you? Where were you? What happened for you? We were worried. So he said, Tomorrow night, we're making a big meal, a big celebration. And I want everyone in the town to show up. Tell everyone, everyone that's come to my house to show up for this celebration. And that's what happened. A beautiful celebration. We fed everyone. It was unusual. Everyone's asked, so where, where were you? In the middle, he disappears. And two minutes after he disappears, this beggar that used to sit in the shul for a year, shows up at the party and they all start laughing and they all say, ah, this beggar, this crazy guy. The only guy he went to try to get food was from Ruben, the guy who never helps anybody. And he's pushing his way as the beggar to the front of the table. And finally comes to the front of the table. 
he stands up and says, I am not the beggar you think I am. This pair of clothing, this is what I wore for a year. This is me ruling. And he tells them the whole story. Tells them how terrible a sin that he had, how much he realized how he had sinned, how he did repentance. And now from now on, his house will be open for everyone to join, to be part of his family, whoever needs tzedakah, whoever needs a meal, his home is going to be open for everyone. Tzedakah, Tatsum, and Mavis says, charity saves us from death. So at this time, we want Hashem to save us from spiritual death, from longer exile. Obviously, we want everyone to be healthy and well. There's no physical deaths or pain. So this is the power of tzedakah, the power of charity, how it takes us to a new level. Through charity, we can accomplish the greatest things. When we go out of our way to help someone, Sometimes it's with money, sometimes with a good word, sometimes it's with time. When we do that, we have the ability to change even the worst decree to the best decree. And may Hashem help that our extra charity that we do during these next few days will bring the final redemption with the with the Beis Hamikdash, Mashiach, the Rebbe leading us, Mashiach, to all of us, and to bring all the blessings in this world. So I want to wish you all a Shavuot Tov. Remember Shavuot that Tov. Shabbat is mm. Wednesday night, Thursday. So let's use the next few days to really add in as much as we can in Torah study, in uh, tzedakah, in many ways, in Abbas Yisrael, in Jewish unity. And we'll have all the blessings and we'll wait and we'll hear. Eliyahu Hanabi Eliyahu Hatizbi Eliyahu, 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 Adimadi, Eliyahu, 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 let the redemption be already. Thank you so much for being with us together to welcome in the new week that's going to, God willing, bring Mashiach the reality for all of us right away. Amen. Thank you, Rabbi Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rabbi. Welcome, everyone. Thank you, Rabbi. Like it.